Welcome to Matters Financial and Geopolitical from a Frontier. I hope you had a great weekend. Political reflections, my article over the weekend kind of roamed around and it's titled Ours is the Most Cryptic of Centuries. I was speaking with His Excellency Johann Borgstam and he said, but Ali Khan, everything started with MH370. And that took me back to an article I wrote then in which I quoted Delilo, who says, we are not witnessing the flow of information so much as pure spectacle or information made sacred, ritually unreadable, the small monitors of the office, home and car, become a kind of idolatry here where crowds might gather in astonishment. And indeed, since 2014, the world has become increasingly cryptic. And like Salman Rushdie, who once spent his life living under the dark shadow of an Ayatollah's fatwa, wrote, ours is the most cryptic of centuries, its true nature a dark secret. Let's begin in the United States. Special Counsel Robert Mueller has now delivered his report to the Attorney General. President Trump has spent most of his presidency trying to undercut this very report. Its arrival is therefore noteworthy. The Fed Chairman Powell went full on dove last week, pronouncing that there would be no rate hike in 2019. Global bond yields went into free fall after the Fed waved the white flag on policy normalization. Ten-year bond yields were at 0.03%, ten-year US yields at 2.5%, ten-year Japanese yields at minus 0.05%. Policymakers, particularly in the US, have blinked. Over in Europe, Germany printed a shocking PI, PMI number. The euro, which, which had pushed higher after Powell's dovish tilt, suddenly woke up to the fact that if the US was slowing, then Europe was going to be slowing even further. And the euro was last at 113.06. The best performing currency in 2019 has been sterling, though if the world goes to hell in a handbasket, then all bets will be on the yen. The whole Brexit scenario has become a needle which appears simply impossible to thread. The Speaker John Bercow quite properly guillotined Theresa May's endless Groundhog Day where she brought the same deal but for a change of an apostrophe to the vote in the House of Commons. And in fact, over the last few months, we have watched parliamentary democracy reassert itself as the prime ministership's power has dimmed. The EU, according to Tusk, has agreed to the following, agrees to an Article 50 extension until the 22nd of May if the withdrawal agreement is approved next week. Not going to happen. If not agreed next week, then extension until 12th April. Approves the Strasbourg Agreement and continues no deal preparations. Where we go from here is anybody's guess. It is highly unlikely that the Prime Minister has a future. Sky News revealed the armed forces have activated a team in a nuclear bunker beneath the Ministry of Defence to step up preparations for a no-deal Brexit. I predicted that in fact it was the Lycée Palace and President Emmanuel Macron who now has significant veto or decider power and the ability to essentially just throw the UK off the EU train at a moment's notice. Macron says if it's no deal Brexit, if British MPs reject the accord again. The question for investors is as follows. Is the kitchen sink already priced into sterling and therefore it remains a buy on practically any news? 
But what would an apocalyptic outcome look like? Last week, President Trump tweeted, after 52 years, it is time for the United States to fully recognize Israel's sovereignty over the Golan Heights, which is of critical strategic and security importance to the state of Israel and regional stability. Karl Bildt responded, the jungle is back. This is a catastrophic departure. From the very basis of international law, the Kremlin will applaud and apply the same principle to Crimea. Beijing will applaud and apply it to South China Sea. Many years ago, when I sat for my entrance exam for Westminster School, one of the questions that I was confronted with was this. Might is right. Discuss. Some of the uncertainty we're all experiencing is watching the president of the free world seemingly torching the rules-based order, thumping his chest, and as, and as Bilt tweeted, returning us to the jungle. From a geopolitical perspective, the big popping over the radar moment happened in Christchurch, New Zealand. Jacinda Ardern, an agnostic who took her oath of office without a Bible or mention of God, a living example that to be a humanitarian you need no dogma, just compassion, love, an open heart and an open mind, Haroon Rashid, shattered the glass ceiling into tiny little pieces. She is the first Western leader to seek to assert narrative control over terror, the symbolism of a biker gang providing an escort to a hearse transporting the coffin of Haji Muhammad Daoud Nabi, killed in New Zealand's twin mosque attacks to the Memorial Park Cemetery in Christchurch, sums things up metaphorically and even cryptically. She vowed never to utter the name of the twin mosque gunman to deprive him of the publicity he craved. She warned social media companies, saying they are the publisher, not just the postman. The Prime Minister of New Zealand asserted narrative control and pushed back. And what Don DeLillo noted, I used to think it was possible for an artist to alter the inner life of the culture. Now bomb makers and gunmen have taken that territory. If you want to measure a soft power leapfrog, keep an eye on the Kiwis and this remarkably sophisticated epitome of 21st century girl power, Jacinda Ardern. Finally, let us not forget the egg boy. Donations are being sought for the boy's defense and to buy more eggs, reports have said. 25th of August, 2014, I wrote this piece about MH370, and, I, and in that I said the signal announcing this new arrhythmic normal was the disappearance of MH370. This is referencing Emmanuel Macron being the decider. This is from Zero Hedge, and it's a cartoon of Theresa May asking Emmanuel Macron, I would like an extension, please. So he, in my opinion, is the decider. President Macron was here in Nairobi uh, this month, and uh, I wrote a piece about that as well, if you're interested. I like this from the Financial Times. Welcome to Disneyland. Leading Brexiteer Jacob Rees-Mogg is playing Mickey Mouse as the Sorcerer's Apprentice from Fantasia. Theresa May is the Wicked Witch from Snow White, though she is short on magic. Mr. Corbyn is 6-1 to one to succeed Theresa May at number 10, ahead of leading Tory figures including Boris Johnson, 13-2, Michael Gove, 7-1, Jeremy Hunt at 11-1, according to Odds Checker. The odds of Theresa May being replaced at number 10 this year have been cut by Ladbrokes to 6-1 to one on. So they think it's a racing certainty. As far as the odds are concerned, things are going from bad to worse for the Prime Minister, Miss Bridge added. The Sunday Times reported in a series of private telephone calls, senior ministers agreed that Theresa May must announce she is standing down, warning that she has become a toxic and erratic figure. Frantic series of phone calls saying she's toxic, erratic, judgment has gone haywire. 
Sunday Times spoke to 11 cabinet ministers who confirmed uh, at, at, that they were going to demand that she announces she is quitting. So plenty to go for, but I think ultimately she can't get this over the line. The core truth, David Frum says, is that the President of the United States was helped into his job by clandestine Russian attacks on the American political process. That's a fact. Secondly, the collusion was always in plain sight and the campaign at Helsinki virtually every day, but DC ties itself in knots, looking for a smoking gun while tripping through a massacre, C.S. Dickey. This is a photograph of the Golan Heights and, uh, you know, President Hafez al-Assad, who was the father of the current president, uh, he's often said, and in particular to Bill Clinton, he would rather die than not get full withdrawal. And he used to describe to President Clinton how he used to swim in the lake before Israel occupied the Golan. The New York has an interesting article of how did the FAA allow the Boeing 73 MAX to fly. It's well worth reading in full kinds of pulls uh, all the thoughts that we've had together. They continue to use this whataboutism PR response and it's really not working. Um, the lack of touch I wrote and finesse displayed by Boeing over the last seven days is mind-boggling. They have stayed resolutely behind the curve from the get-go. The message Boeing sent was that safety came second, a simply untenable position. Eventually, the FAA capitulated and grounded the 737 Max.